Hi, and welcome to another episode of Kendra Unplugged, the place to be for all things story. Hey, you're gonna be living these great stories. You should definitely be telling them. And tonight, we are going to focus on a message entirely for you parents out there. Yeah, you're a parent. I'm a parent, it's not an easy job. And as of late, I've noticed there's a lot of things that have been flying around the internet, blogs and articles, all geared towards helping parents be better parents. Blogs like, um, Oh, how, how to talk to your daughter, or how not to talk to your son, or be in the photographs, even if you feel a little bit chubby, or leave bunny post-its around the house. I really didn't understand the point of that one. I don't know about you, when I'm finished reading these articles, I'm, I'm not left feeling excited or empowered, but rather exhausted. Like there's so much to learn and read and do to become a good parent that I'm so busy reading it that I don't have time to actually be a good parent. So yeah. Let's fix that problem. What's gonna happen right here, right now, is I am going to give you three, just three simple steps to becoming the greatest parent ever. And I know that sounds like a big claim, but seriously, by the time this video is done, you are going to have the secret to what research has determined is the single greatest predictor of a child's emotional health and happiness. And if you know me at all, you know what I'm gonna say. The answer is story. So I'm gonna give you three, as I said, three simple stories to tell your kids to make you the best parent ever. Story number one, the story of when they were born. Folks, the birth of a child is insane. There is so much emotion and drama and, and suspense and action every single time a child is born. It's an Academy Award winning moment. Show me a human, a, a, a child or an adult, and you're showing me a person who would love to hear the story of how they came into the world just one more time. So take a moment and recount the details in your own mind of how your child came into this earth. And here's a little tip for you. If you're about to have a child, you're planning to have children, when you're there, I asked my nurse to jot down a few notes about the when and where's and how everything happened because admittedly, those five long hours of labor and those four intense minutes of pushing are all kind of a blur. Story number two, your love story. Do your kids know how you met? Do your kids know how mom and dad became mom and dad? Who got the phone number first? Where your first date was? Telling your love story lets your children know that there was love before they got here and that they came from that love. This is a really important aspect of building a, a child's sense of of belonging, of a, a, a sense of strength, that they were born from something really important. So make sure you tell that love story. Plus, it's super funny to think of your mom and dad dating. Story number three. Now, I understand the previous two stories could be a little bit complicated. Maybe you weren't there for the birth of a child that you now call your own, or maybe the characters in your love story have shifted. But there is one story that we all have, no matter the diverted paths our life has taken, and it is our own story of childhood adversity. It sounds bigger than it actually is, so let me break this down a little bit for you. This is actually the inspiration for this video. I was, um, it was one morning I was driving to spin class and I had the radio on and the DJ was talking about his, his son. His son was about 11 years old and he had just tried out for this advanced baseball team. And apparently this kid had very little previous baseball playing. All the other kids that were trying out for the team had been playing baseball since they were like two years old. They knew the lingo, they knew all the plays, they knew how to do everything. But this 11 year old boy, the DJ's son, was really good, just naturally gifted. And so even though he didn't know everything, he still made the team. The dad was super stoked. This was a really big deal. But that night, when the dad came home to tuck his 11 year old son into bed, his son was crying and was begging that he get taken off the team. And the dad's like, what? I don't even know. 
what are you even talking about? And the boys said, they know so much more than me. I, I'm never going to feel good on that team. Please don't make me play. And the, and the DJ, the morning talk show guy said, I just, I didn't know what else to say. And so I emailed the coach and, and told him we wouldn't be playing. And of course, I was sitting in the car thinking, you idiot, I know exactly what you need to say. You needed to tell this kid a story. Here's the deal, folks. We're all going to have those moments where our kids come to us and they are begging not to have to face their fears. Because who wants to face their fears? In those moments when when you need a little bit of time to stall or because I said so just isn't going to do it, the best thing you can do is share your own story of when you, as a kid, had to face adversity. There you go, that's it. Three simple stories. The story of your kid's birth, your love story, and a story of your own childhood adversity. That's all you have to do to raise emotionally healthy, really happy kids. I'm not the only one who says this. Research has revealed that the more a child knows about his or her family stories, the better equipped they are to face challenges, to handle adversity. They have a greater sense of self-control and higher self-esteem. Telling your family stories to your children makes them feel like they are a part of something bigger. I mean, if there's any challenge for a child, it's that they feel so small. These stories make them feel like their lives have more meaning. What greater gift could you give your child than stories you already know? So, you want to be a better parent. You want to give your child a better chance at happiness. Sure you do. What parent doesn't? So quit reading other people's blogs, other people's articles, other people's stories. Go out there and tell your kids your own stories. Well, there you have it. Another episode of Kendra Unplugged is in the books. And now you can be an awesome parent, which I'm sure you already are. If you found this information valuable, go ahead, pass it around, send it to all the parents you know so that they stop wasting their time reading all these other blogs and articles and get to work telling their own stories. And of course, if you haven't already, head on back to kindrahall.com and subscribe to the website. I have some really great stuff coming up that I'm so excited about. I know, this is just the beginning. And subscribing is the only way, the only way to be sure that you don't miss a thing. As always guys, it has been awesome talking with you today. Never forget, you are just one story from greatness. Until next time. Rogue brown hair. Do you see the rogue brown hair? No. Do you? Unless you cut it off. It's... I mean, is it, it before no, it like made me look like itself. I had like a no. like a creature? <laughs> cut it off. Thanks, man. <laughs>